Aloha, thank you for viewing Paradise Nectar Apiary's presentation of the observations and signs of symptoms of herbicide contamination in honey bee colonies. In this presentation, I will be going over observations I have made over the last several years as the owner and creator of Paradise Nectar Apiaries. Although I'm continuing to research and observe what is happening to my bees, I am seeing a correlation of herbicide spraying and my bees dying in my neighborhood. It is due to these two things happening that I am continuing to try to figure out with more testing and more research exactly what is happening to the bees. The most obvious sign of honeybee contamination is dead bees on the ground under the entrance. It is normal to find dead and dying bees on the ground in front of the hive since worker bees only live four to six weeks. A healthy honeybee that dies of natural causes appears fuzzy and dry. The body decomposes, maintaining a dry, brittle form. However, dead bees found 24 hours after exposure to flowers sprayed with herbicide appear to be wet and juicy, swollen or sticky, um, often clumped together. They have less hair on their thorax and their thorax is often more shiny than other bees. Um, they appear to be stuck together in piles under the hive entrance and when you try to separate them, it is difficult. The picture in this slide is of decomposing bees three days after coming in contact with herbicide. The decomposing bees start to darken and lose their pigment. They become very sticky and they stick together in piles underneath the entrance of the hive. As they decompose, they change into a black gooey pile. The contamination cycle begins with a person spraying flowering plants with herbicide. Honeybees forage for pollen and nectar and drink water from flowers and leaves that have been sprayed with herbicide. Herbicide and surfactant residue gets ingested by honeybees and carried back to the hive. Honeybees share the contaminated pollen and nectar with other bees in the hive, and the pollen and nectar is then stored in the beeswax cones. The fat-soluble residues from the surfactants and herbicide is absorbed into the lipophilic beeswax cones. Both bees that have ingested the herbicide and surfactant residues, as well as developing larvae that are fed the contaminated pollen and nectar, die. Dead bees and larvae may be seen on the ground below the hive entrance and on the floor inside the hive. The beeswax combs in the hive develop an oily and sponge-like texture and appearance. The pictures on the right are of the contamination cycle. The picture on the top left shows day one, a person spraying herbicide on flowering plants. This is actually somebody spraying flowering plants near my home, which led to days two and three, where we began to see the dying flowers turning brown outside, and at the same time seeing dead bees appearing on the ground at the entrances below our hives. Um, we are also seeing poison bees decompose under the hives on days 4 to 10, start to see it turn into a black gooey mass. Uh, during the time of contamination, from the first time we see dead bees on the ground, days 2 and beyond, we see beeswax combs that are abandoned, brood left to rot, and the combs become oily and sponge-like. In 2018, we lost our farm to the lava flow and got a property in Wainaku. We moved in on August 2018, and we had 67 hives when we moved to our new property. Uh, the red lines on the chart on the left show the losses that we endured over the time from when we moved in to now. And the green lines show uh, splits and swarms that I've caught and uh, different hives I may have brought from other yards, which have boosted our numbers, um, which shows the contrast between our original hives, um, our losses, and our new gains. Um, the main thing to note here is that all of these losses were not due to varroa mite infestation or small hive beetles or any of that kind of stuff. It was all a slow decline where we started to see combs abandon, the bees couldn't cover them, populations were dropping quickly, and it would go from being a vibrant, healthy hive and slowly deteriorate to almost any, hardly any bees. There would be a queen, sometimes she wouldn't be laying. Um, sometimes a hive would go on and on with workers and a queen, and then eventually all you would see is just empty combs. They weren't even trying to make diploid drones. Since we got our property in 2018, we have observed that our neighbors and county workers spray herbicide on a regular basis. Um, since that time, we've noted that honeybee populations will drop in several hives after they have sprayed, combs are abandoned, and brood is often removed and can be seen on the ground under the hive. 
our neighbors will spray again, county workers will come through and spray the roadsides, and we will begin to see visible signs of damage on the beeswax combs, dead bees in the hive and on the ground below the entrance, and the fish in our spring-fed ponds develop bug eyes, um, which can be equated as their eyes actually popping out of their heads. Um, we'll sometimes see dead fish and oily residue in our ponds as well. The pictures on the left are of healthy honeybees and their beeswax combs. These hives have not had notable signs of contamination. You will see a contrast in colors based on cells that are filled with brood, pollen, nectar, or honey. And also, the cells that have been filled with brood are often darker due to the fact that bees sterilize them with propolis, which is a combination of resins from plants and their saliva. This color change really only shows us the age of the comb. As bees continue to have new brood grown in the comb, that darkens the cells and we can begin to see when a comb is starting to get older, such as the one on the bottom right. These combs are not unhealthy, but Paradise Nectar does have the practice of phasing out old comb every year. The pictures of the combs on the right were taken from a hive that was contaminated with herbicide. The hive was abandoned, brood was left to rot, you can actually see eggs and young larvae in the picture on the bottom left. Uh, the comb becomes oily, you can almost see a difference if you look closely at the, the brood comb cells on the left and the brood comb cells on the right. They're, the texture changes, the consistency changes, and if you actually touch the wax you feel an oil, oily residue on your fingers. Um, the most telling sign for me has been a sponge-like quality that the wax takes on. Um, it's quite visible when you're up close to it especially, but you can see it if you look at the picture on the bottom right on the left-hand side of that comb. You can really see that the comb has been gone over many times with propolis and it takes on a spongy yet brittle form. Um, that for me has been the number one telling sign that there has been some kind of exposure to herbicide based on the surfactant being fat soluble and oily and beeswax is lipophilic and sucks that up. I've included this slide to show the contrast between a healthy and a poisoned brood comb. So the healthy brood comb on the left shows Capped brood is a light papery texture. Above that we see a little bit of pollen in the cells, which is pretty covered with bees. And above that, close to the top bar, we see capped honey. Um, this is a pretty standard look for a lot of the combs in my hive. I see this often, and even though it is dark in color, it is not concerning to me because the bees are covering it, it's healthy, and the brood overall has a healthy and vibrant look to it. If you show that in contrast with the comb on the right, you will see that in the comb on the right, the texture and the appearance of the brood actually looks different. It's darker in, in color, but that's not normal. It's actually because if you look at it up close, it's, it's got an oily texture to it. Um, if you also look at the sides of the comb, you'll see that they look more brittle and sponge-like, and they have been thickened with propolis so many times from the bees trying to sterilize it to keep it safe. Um, you'll also notice that the very top, there's no honey in there, and it's a very light color, and then it slowly darkens and it concentrates in the dark color at the very bottom. Uh, this is actually a comb that was not very old. I would say that this comb has been in a hive for maybe six to eight months. And so based on that, we should not be seeing it with no honey at the top and with all this abandoned brood in the center and this dark, unnatural look to it. This has been a telling sign for me of contamination. And so as I have been trying to explain to people what I'm seeing, people who are asking me what might be happening to their bees, um, this has been a the, one of the most uh, basic ways for me to get an assessment of a hive that has actually been in contact with herbicide. I wanted to give you a little history about Paradise Nectar Apiaries and how I do what I do, why I do it, all of that. Um, so since 2018, I have been caring for honeybees. I started Paradise Nectar um, as a family business, and I switched completely over to treatment-free beekeeping practices in 2010. Uh, I had experience using miticides and other pest treatments inside the hive, as well as experience using herbicide to manage unruly weeds for landscaping purposes. I witnessed the effects of herbicide on honeybees, both through hive management uses and in agricultural uses when injecting or spraying herbicide on plants and trees. 
And it's through my observations that I came to decide that I wanted to avoid putting my bees around uh, herbicide because of the losses and the miticides actually killed queens and bees and uh, young brood, so I decided it wasn't for me as well. So I changed over to treatment-free beekeeping practices, and all that really means for me is I don't put things that don't belong into my hive. Um, I do use diatomaceous earth in a tray underneath my hive, which catches pests, and I can use it in my gardens as an amendment and feed it to my chickens, so it kind of works as a sustainable product. Um, but mo most of my management methods include uh, checkerboarding, which is simply an inserting an empty bar or frame between two drawn out combs. This inspires the bees to make a new fresh comb and um, you know we want that because then it will have less pests and diseases and contaminants. I kind of equate this to like washing your dishes or changing your sheets. It's cleaning up your space, it's making it more hygienic. And I cycle out the old comb every year in kind of the same fashion. You know, when something is uh, looks expired, uh, I take it out. And so if it becomes undesirable or I see that a comb has a lot of mites and they're filling it up with mostly drone brood that's dying or unhealthy, of course I'd remove that. And when the bees let you know when something's done, usually by filling it up with pollen or honey. So it's a good time to remove it when I see that. Um, this process of doing checkerboarding has actually saved me through mite and beetle infestations, Nosema serrana issues, and now it's what's saving me from being taken out by herbicide. Uh, this method is all about keeping things clean and hygienic, and by seeing how the old wax looks as it has aged before I started removing stuff every year, um, I saw that the stresses that the bees faced were trying to keep everything clean, and with all of the environmental factors and pests and, and diseases that are out there, if we force them to live on old comb, they get sick. Um, so specifically even brood combs, you know, anywhere they store food, things like that, need to make sure they're clean, healthy, and hygienic. Uh, so I was doing pretty well before moving to Wainaku, and then I uh, came to an area that is residential with large lots that are zoned for agricultural use. Many of the residents here use herbicide to maintain the weeds in their yard, and my neighbors that are closest to me and have properties surrounding me actually spray on a regular basis and often spray flowering plants. Um, it is this that has the spraying of herbicide by county workers, by you know local residents that I believe is causing my hives to decline at a rapid rate and has actually caused me to lose uh, over half of my apiary so far. Um, the information that I'm sharing in this presentation is compiled from the observations and records that I have kept. It is my desire to find out exactly what is causing my bees to die because I don't want to be selling products to people that are unhealthy. I don't want to eat contaminated products. I don't want to put my friends and family at risk. And I certainly don't want to lose all my bees because they're like my family. So uh, considering that I've been selling bees on islands since 2010, and I'm an educator on island during the same amount of time, I feel compelled to help other people who are struggling. I manage hives for 16 clients, and they range from Honoka'a to Mountain View to Puna, um, Hilo area, and I see chemical contamination in hives all around the island. And it's often after county workers have sprayed roadsides. So I feel like even if it's not to to change what's happening in a, in a large scale, it's to make awareness of how we can avoid having such an impact. And um, without knowing what we're dealing with, I don't know how to properly educate people. So I know that knowledge is power, and that's what I'm hoping to do is to have a team of people who also want to seek that knowledge with me and do the tests and keep you know, finding out what we can do to make it better. You guys have heard me talk about what chemically poisoned bees look like. She's been poisoned. See how she's shiny like that? And she looks kind of like weird, juicy inside. That's a healthy bee. That's a really healthy bee. That's a healthy bee. See the difference? Look at them next to each other. Do mm -hmm. you see the difference? Yeah. That one looks like it's more stained. Yep. It's like almost like they're swollen with juice. That's what it looks like to me. Like you can see she was poisoned. See that one? So you can really see the difference when they're next so to each other. Like she was poisoned right do you, there. Do you ever end mm -hmm. the bees that are poisoned? Sometimes if they look really bad, I'll pinch them. But I mean, there's there's so many right now that it's I'd be going around just killing bees all day. 
That's sad. That. Yeah, that's a bad idea. So then you walk your way back from, from yep, so the we're right working to the back. So here's what happens to those bees. See how they were poisoned? She's mm -hmm. dying on the bottom of the hive. Oh. Their bodies just start to break they down. Can't they can't function. So see that? Here's one who just died. Mm -hmm. She was poisoned. See how different she looks? Mm -hmm. And if you look at the pile of dead bees on the ground, you see that right there? Mm -hmm. See those? See how they look the same? This is not normal death. See how sticky and weird they look? And then this one here, she was just in the process of dying. So she's, otherwise, nothing bad happened to her, but she's got that same look to her that I just showed you, and she's just really crippled. She can't function. Even the other bees are like, what's wrong with you? It's sad. It is, Aww. and that keeps happening in here. See, there's another one. See that? Oh. See how they're, they're just dying on the bottom of the hive? That's too Thank you for taking the time to view this video. I hope that after viewing this presentation, you have an understanding of what we are dealing with at Paradise Nectar Apiaries. If you feel that you would like to be involved in this project, please let me know. Thank you.